So welcome to my daughter's room. Check this out. Junk everywhere. Toys, stuffed animals, you name it. So in this video, we just purchased and we'll be reviewing this piece right here and putting it together. All right, welcome to my channel and to this video, you're probably looking for a solution on storage for toys and stuffed animals, maybe clothes. So we went online and there's like three to $500 or more, right? Uh, pieces of furniture that you could buy, but we decided to take a risk and for a smooth 50 to 60 bucks, we got this portable cubed closet or that's how they advertise it. I'll put a link down in the description below. So you can check that out if you are interested and we'll be reviewing this and putting it together in this video and ultimately deciding was this a good purchase for us or not so here it is right out of the box they basically come with uh, all of these little uh it's not fabric it's like a soft plastic it's kind of flimsy but soft but but sturdy at the same time you get a, an appreciation for what that kind of feels like there and so there's a whole bunch of these squares we'll be separating these and I'll obviously explain what does what and what goes where. But we've got these black, these are the shelf pieces. And there are several of these. And all of these pieces right here that are white or translucent white in color. There are some stickers, so the little one can decorate this when it's all said and done. And let's separate these because some of these have a little hole you can see in them. And these are the doors. You can certainly buy these cubed pieces with no doors, uh, but you got to, you know, put in the extra investment of baskets then, or everything's just going to be visible. By the way, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, do lots of home projects around the house, saving you time and money. Nothing's off limits and share this channel with somebody. So they got these little plastic connector pieces. And we're going to start by forming the base. Now, the unit that we bought was an eight cubed unit. Yours might be bigger or smaller, but we're going to start and you can organize these and basically build it in any way, kind of a custom build, so to speak. So there's no rules that says like these two have to be at the, at the bottom or it has to be two cubes wide. No, you can make it four cubes wide and two tall or whatever. We're going to be doing two cubes wide and four tall. We want this to be more vertical than horizontal. So we're going to take the two base pieces. These are the, uh, the, the squares and we'll put them flat on the ground and you basically connect them with these little white connector pieces, just like that. And I've enlisted the help of my mm -hmm. daughter here and she actually got kind of bored with this part, but I'll show you a little later in the video that she really got into this other part that was pretty cool so so if i kind of push on it you can see they're they're quite sturdy actually there is a limit to how much weight you can put inside each shelf and those are in the instructions but look at that pretty easy i think it's like 20 pounds it says do not exceed 20 pounds which is quite a bit if you think about it so we're going to continue to build these up and you place the corners into these little white connector pieces Good work. and you'll know when they're in or not. They like snap in and it's pretty simple. It is possible that they are not in all the way, especially as you move kind of upward in your construction, so to speak, they might back out just a little bit, but we're going to get those super secure later on. There's another step that basically ensures that these don't come off within reason. Good. So there we go. And you can kind of pop them down. The kit does include a pair of gloves and a little plastic hammer. So you can actually you don't have to like beat your hands. And I kind of figured that out later. I was like, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> although it, was, it wasn't really a big deal, but should have probably paid attention to that a little, a little sooner. Because the hammer basically, obviously, will make sure that that seats properly all the way. There's another view for you. And it's kind of like, okay, which way does this? Oh, there we go. But for the most part, it's pretty simple. And notice the flat round piece always goes to the outside, whether it's in the front or the back. The star piece kind of goes, points toward me. And there on the other side is the flat round smooth side. And that always points outward. Now you construct the shelf like this. 
the corners of the shelves go into that same, those same corner piece, the little connector pieces. And you might need two hands. Not recommended doing it with one hand. And with even the two back pieces, it's pretty sick. It doesn't like fall out. So that tells me that's hugging it and, and securing it pretty, pretty well. And it takes a little bit of coordination. Great bonding opportunity with the little one and me. A little DIY project. Trying to do that more and more these days as the kids get a little older. And again, make sure those connector pieces are seated properly. That nothing wiggled, wiggled out. All right, so you can see we're going to be putting on the, the door now just to show you how that kind of works. An advantage of this kit is that each cube has a swinging door. We really thought that was important because we wanted to be able to close the doors and hide all the junk. And to do that, you put the connector pieces just like this. And you basically want it to kind of, there's the smooth round side facing outward. And the instructions are very clear. It tells you exactly what to do. So if you're like, wait a minute, where does that end piece go exactly? Just open the instructions, it's very easy. And check that out, it swings open and closed. How cool is that? And no play at all, it doesn't back out. So you can, in theory, open and close this an infinite amount of times and it wouldn't matter. So I'm gonna continue building vertically using the process that I just showed you with the connector pieces, the shelves, the sides, the backs. And again, the doors are the ones with the little holes in it. So you can put your finger in there and open the door, it's pretty simple. So we'll speed that up for you a little bit. And here we are, we've got the top working our way up. Again, this is four cubes tall and two wide is how we want to configure that. But gosh, you could just tip it over and it could be, well, you'd have to reconfigure the shelves, but you could basically do this in any customized way that you want. And you don't have to put one of those shelves in. You can leave a shelf out and actually hang like clothes up for the, your little one. So, or if you've got a really long dress, you can leave two shelves on one side out and have basically this huge open vertical space, which is really cool, I think, as an option. We chose not to do that because we just wanted to stack toys in baskets and bins and whatever else we could just throw in there. Oh, there's that little, I, find the, I found the, the plastic hammer. Should have found that earlier though. Fabric is pretty good quality, not great, but it's not poor quality at all. And we're gonna hook this thing up too. You've got, you can basically put this little hanger thing anywhere on the side or inside even. You can hang it from a shelf, but we preferred it on the, on the outside for like purses and stuff. All right, we're nearing completion. Now we've got everything built, all the connector pieces in. The next step is to take these little twisty ties. Yes, the kit does include these, and there's a lot of them. This is probably the most difficult part in terms of um, time consuming, and you gotta kinda get, find each joint like that, and, and you can tuck them or cut them off, but you gotta pull them tight for each joint, which is kind of annoying, but obviously necessary to make sure that these things do not separate. So we're going to get everyone started by hand here. Each joint, each piece of metal has to be attached to the other piece of metal. We're going to go around with the pliers when we're all done, and we're going to gently give those a little tug because and they'll, they will snap right off if you pull them too tightly. But we're going to tug them like this just to make sure those are as tight as possible. And we just gently wiggle it like that. And then we can go through with the wire cutters and cut those, snip those off. And that's something really cool that my daughter got into. She loved doing that. She was totally, totally into it. I thought she was going to bail after like one or two. And there's plenty of these left over. So if you need to reconfigure your shelves or anything later, you can snip those off and then reconfigure and then use plastic ties. Again, this is what it looks like when it's all done. Now... You can see for the price point that the doors, although they close, some of them do not, there's a little bit of a gap in some versus the other, despite being 
perfectly tight and all the connector pieces in the way they should be. So this is the downside of this of a unit like this for this price point. It definitely gets the job done. It's practical. It hides everything. It's sturdy enough. And I think it looks okay. You can even hang. There's a little hanger piece on the end up there on the top. So lots of versatility. But aesthetically, you'll have to use your best judgment, of course. The gaps in the doors is something I could live with. They did close and close well. The gaps were just a small detail. So we decided to keep this. And we ultimately really liked it. Check it out. This is her... My daughter loading everything up, put the stickers on it, and she loves it, baby. Goodbye, overall, and hopefully this has helped you. Thanks.